So we are really looking forward to taking you through some of the, um, just a few of the resources that Teaching Tolerance has to offer. Um, everything is located on the Teaching Tolerance website, which is tolerance.org. The Teaching Tolerance Advisory Board that Julie and I are a part of is a national group of anti-bias educators who help teaching tolerance stay rooted in the real experiences and diverse perspectives of school communities across the country. Members of the advisory board are not simply devoted to social justice. They teach, they counsel, and they care for students in schools across the country every day. They give teaching tolerance feedback on new resources by sharing their expertise and practice. And they help program staff anticipate important trends and changes in the field. As members of this select group of educators, advisors grow professionally by networking with board colleagues, by participating in the development of new projects, and then through their role as ambassadors for the Teaching Tolerance mission. Each advisory board serves for a two-year term. The current term ends in 2021 when we'll accept applications for a new board. Teaching Tolerance is the education arm of the Southern Poverty Law Center, and it was founded in 1991 to prevent the growth of hate. And we began by publishing the Teaching Tolerance magazine and producing films chronicling the modern civil rights movement. Today, our community includes more than 500,000 educators who read our magazine, screen our films, visit our website, participate in Mix It Up at Lunch Day, use our curriculum or participate in our social media community. We view tolerance as a way of thinking and feeling, but most importantly of acting. That gives us peace in our individuality, respect for those unlike us, the wisdom to discern humane values and the courage to act upon them. Teaching Tolerance provides free resources to educators. Educators use our materials to supplement the curriculum, to inform their practices, and to create civil and inclusive school communities where children are respected, valued, and welcome participants. Our website was redesigned recently and currently houses almost 600 diverse tech lessons and activities at all levels of education. Teaching Tolerance is housed within the Southern Poverty Law Center and the SPLC has three pillars. The first one is fighting hate. The SPLC monitors hate groups and other extremists throughout the U.S. and exposes their activities to law enforcement agencies, the media, and the public. The second pillar is teaching tolerance. The SPLC knows we don't achieve equality and justice through the courts and investigative reporting alone. The future of our great country lies in the hands of today's young people. The third pillar is seeking justice. The SPLC uses the courts and other forms of advocacy to win systemic reforms on behalf of victims of bigotry and discrimination. Teaching Tolerance has been producing quality teacher-facing materials for over 25 years. Our most widely known asset is perhaps the self-titled magazine published three times a year. As a leading provider of anti-bias educational materials, we do the research and deliver stories to educators in under 2,000 words because we understand the busy days and high demands under which you work. Here's an inside the issue look of our most recent issue with Monita Bell, the managing editor of Teaching Tolerance. Hi, I'm Monita Bell, Managing Editor for Teaching Tolerance, and I'm so excited for you to dig into the Spring 2020 issue of TT Magazine. Are you waiting with bated breath for Stamped? That's Jason Reynolds' forthcoming young adult adaptation of Ibram Kendi's Stamped from the Beginning. Have you read Tanya Bolden's adaptation of Carol Anderson's One Person No Boat? For this issue's cover story, we spoke with Bolden and other authors about the growing trend of adapting social justice books into editions that are more accessible for young people, and how these newer books depart from the old tradition of adapting books just to ease kids into the canon. We also spoke with teachers who told us their students are eating these books up. On the other side of that coin is a story about something that is happening in just about every school and possibly in your own classroom, curriculum violence. I don't wanna to give too much away, but I'll say that Black History Month is a prime time for such violence to take place. 
I encourage you to read this story and the research behind it with an open heart and an open mind to ensure that you are doing right by your students. In between those two stories are a number of others that showcase students who are dedicated to making a difference in their communities and educators and other advocates who are working to make sure that every child eats a hot, nutritious meal at school. Find these stories and more in the spring issue of Teaching Tolerance at tolerance.org. Happy reading. Teaching Tolerance is so much more than their well-known magazine. Their website holds a vast and deep collection of resources, and all you need to, to do to access this information is to create a free account. So we're going to give you a quick tour of it right now, and then we'll dig deeper into a few of those resources that we think you will really love. The topics link on the top left will give you an easy way to search the themes where materials are available on the website. It's important to teach the topics that shape our students' lives. Whether you're looking for a text, a webinar, or a grab-and-go lesson, these resources will help your students explore identity and diversity, recognize injustice, and learn to take action. Topics include race and ethnicity, religion, ability, class, immigration, gender and sexual identity, bullying and bias, and rights and activism. Next to topics is frameworks. We have quite a few scaffolds to use to build resources in order to meet the needs of the population you are working with. With a peek inside this link, you'll see that we've developed for you a set of social justice standards, teaching hard history, which helps to teach with American slavery, critical practices for anti-bias education, a digital literacy framework, and a scaffold for teaching the civil rights movement, including connections to national standards. Educator Grants is up next. Teaching Tolerance Educator Grants support educators who embrace and embed anti-bias principles throughout their classrooms, schools, and districts. These grants, ranging from about $500 to $10,000, support projects that promote affirming school climates and educating youth to thrive in a diverse democracy. Both Julie and I have received an educator grant and would be happy to explain the process to you should you wish to apply for one. Just let us know. Us versus Hate is a new adventure for teaching tolerance. Us versus Hate is a program led by young people and the educators who work with them, and its goal is as simple as it is ambitious, to stand up against bigotry and create safe and welcoming schools for all. It's easy to participate in Us versus Hate. All classes need to do is learn about bigotry. The program's robust anti-bias resource bank will help you find the right lessons for your students. Create anti-hate messages to post in your schools and communities, and then share. Share them with the Us Versus Hate team. Educators or caretakers can submit up to three student entries for the national Us Versus Hate challenge. Select messages will be amplified on Teaching Tolerance's social media, and winning entries will be reproduced and distributed to all participating classrooms nationwide. Mix It Up at Lunch Day is an international campaign that encourages students to identify, question, and cross social boundaries. Schools can register to host a Mix It Up event on any day of the year. Students consistently identify the cafeteria as a place in their school where divisions are clearly and harshly drawn. So we ask students to move out of their comfort zones and connect with someone new over lunch. It's a simple act with profound implications that we encourage educators to include in year-round efforts to promote healthy, welcoming school environments. Studies have shown that interactions across group lines can help reduce prejudice. When students interact with those who are different from them, biases and misperceptions can fall away. You can deepen your knowledge and improve your practice with Teaching Tolerance podcasts. Each episode explores an aspect of teaching tolerance topics or framework and is produced with educators in mind. Use your commute, your workout, or your meal prep time to catch up on the latest thinking and scholarship that matter to you and your students. 
You can subscribe via Apple, Tune, Apple iTunes, Google Music, Stitcher, or Spotify. Are you looking for inspiration and, and or support? Teaching Tolerance provides a range of materials for educators. Learning modules that make you think, presentations you can share, and hands-on workshops with our expert trainers. These resources help teachers improve their practice and help leaders shape their institutions into strong, equitable communities. This summer, all of our workshops are held virtually. In fact, all of them currently are sold out. But <laughs> just keep on looking for that and hopefully we'll um, add some more because um, Teaching Tolerance, um, their website, in fact, is, um, I don't know, if I, I don't know if I'm supposed to share this, but I'm going to. Their tra website traffic is up 750%. And so if you think about what hunger people have for Teaching Tolerance resources, I'm hopeful that more workshops will be added. From film kits and lesson plans to the building blocks of a customized learning plan, texts, student tasks, and teaching strategies, our classroom resources will help you bring relevance, rigor, and social emotional learning into your classroom, all for free. This is where we'd like to spend a little bit more time diving deeper so you can see and experience some of the resources that are available to you. First, we'll look at student texts, which is the third item down on this pull down menu. The Student Text Library is a free online anthology of hundreds of diverse texts that are meaningful to students. Our searchable library of short texts offers a diverse mix of stories and perspectives. This multi-genre, multimedia collection aligns with the Common Core's recommendations for text complexity and te the Teaching Tolerance Social Justice Standards. Choose from informational and literary nonfiction texts, literature, photographs, political cartoons, interviews, infographics, and more. You can also filter by text type, grade level, subject, and topic. Like we mentioned before, we currently have almost 600 texts available for use. The current slide is showing you all the different ways that you can search these 600 texts. Text type is on the left, and you have literature, multimedia, visual, and informational options. You can choose to search by grade level and by social justice domain. The subject search is very popular, which includes social studies, civics, history, economics, and geography. As teachers, we find the topic search to be most useful. These options include slavery, race and ethnicity, religion, ability, class, immigrant, gender and sexual identity, bullying and bias, and rights and activism. Here is an example of a visual text type that's listed under the topic of religion and the subject of civics. Vishajit Singh published this cartoon on his website, sicktoons.com in 2012. So let's read the caption together. In case you are wondering, it's a turban underneath is a seven pound explosive device known as the brain. Now we'd like you to reflect on the meaning behind the visual. What words come to mind when you look at this visual? And what reactions do you have because of this visual? Here's another visual for you. Vishavich Singh created this cartoon in the immediate aftermath of 9-11 and published it on his website, sicktoons.com. It is called Sick I Chart for America. Let's read this together. It says, I am not who you think I am. Look beyond the turban and beard. There is more than meets the eye. Are you certain what my faith is, where I come from? Have you ever personally asked where I come from? If not, then be prepared to truly test your real vision. I am a sick walking the path of compassion, hoping to find the light in our hearts that bind us all. You must have perfect eyesight to be able to read this last line. 
We just <laughs> took you through two teaching strategies. Let's review. For this cartoon, we utilized the teaching strategy of text graffiti. We had asked you to reflect on the meaning behind this visual along with the words and the reactions you had when you looked at this visual. Text graffiti is an effective way to engage a group of students in talking about a text theme, plot, or claims while keeping the discussion anchored to the text. Students activate prior knowledge and make predictions about literary elements or content themes. For instance, an English class may be asked to comment specifically on figurative language they find in the quotes. In a social studies class, students might be asked to comment on what political party or social class they think the author represents. Text graffiti eases students into intensive study of a full text. Once students begin reading the entire text, they see familiar words and phrases. For the sick eye chart of America visual, we, we utilize the prior knowledge and personal association survey. We had asked you to pull out words that you are feeling something about, including emotional words or words that were important to the meaning of the visual. This strategy helps you select what words to teach by gauging students' prior knowledge. This allows you to plan prioritize and differentiate to maximize the impact of vocabulary instruction. Surveys also allow students to preview the words they need to know. Use survey results to decide which words need more attention or which words need to focus um, or which students need to focus on different words. The surveys can reveal valuable information about student attitudes and assumptions related to certain words and the strategy also supports the critical practice of knowing students deeply. So at this point, you may be wondering how we magically found these two amazing visuals for this topic. And we you know, had teaching strategies that paired really well with the visuals and we also perfectly supported English learners. So let me tell you that we did not create any of this on our own. So let us walk you through what we did. We utilized the search function and searched for our topic. The left-hand side shows me everything that came up. We could have looked through 38 articles, one author, four lessons, three student texts, one moment, or one webinar. We chose to look at the learning plan. Learning plans are built by teachers and reflect backward design. You can build your own learning plan, which allows you to combine the teaching tolerance social justice standards common core aligned literacy strategies and student performance tasks with windows and mirror text from the student text library. The result is a comprehensive literacy-based plan that is both rigorous and relevant, or you can browse, search, save, and choose from a collection of learning plans already created by teaching tolerance staff and teaching tolerance users. The learning plan we chose by, was written by our colleague and friend, Julia. Let's look inside. So in Julia's learning plan, we found three visuals, three teaching strategies, and one student task. If we truly loved this learning plan and wanted to make sure we could find it again, we could click on the save a copy to my account. We can also bookmark any or all portions of the learning plan. You'll see what we bookmarked um, in the first half of this learning plan because you'll see a red flag. Bookmarking items that you find useful as you peruse this website is important because you'll be able to find the ideas you love easily when you need them. There's one more resource that isn't as easily found on our website, but we have found to be really informative and an important tool as educators. Reading Diversity is a tool for selecting diverse texts. This resource helps educators ex examine current texts that they are considering for classroom use. It examines text complexity, reader and task, diversity and inclusion, and critical literacy. Teaching Tolerance created two editions, a short and a long form. The long form is really for folks making curriculum decisions, perhaps over an extended school break, the short form is a checklist that teachers could complete before making a final decision to use a text with their class. 
This tool is great for utilizing when determining books used in class or any other article or text that you're considering. So let's take a look at the short form so you can see a snapshot of what the tool has to offer. A few of these questions that you'll be asked include, what voices does this text include in terms of race, ethnicity, gender, class, age, ability, religion, place, immigration status, or LGBTQ identity? Another question, does this text accurately reflect lived experiences in terms of setting, characters, speakers, events, language, and illustrations? This is one that I really um, like to ask uh, other educators. Does this content perpetuate or rely on stereotypes, generalizations, or misrepresentations? Also this one, consider the gaps in silences. Are students, are certain people or groups left out or given only a silent or insubstantial role? Another question, does this text mirror the identities and experiences of my students? Another question, might this text be a window into the identities and experiences of people whose lives are different than my students' lives? These questions are profound and the questions are worded in a way that encourages conversations about a book selection before it meets the hands of a student. It's really important to have these conversations in order to prepare for the best educational experience for our students. On the Teaching Tolerance website, we also have examples of completed tools so that you can learn how best to fill out a form like this. Right, and as both of us being ELL educators, we would be remiss if we were not to mention the Teaching Tolerance's best practice best practices for serving English language learners and their families. This guide could have been its very own presentation, but you can access it for free on the website. Um, for many educators, helping children learn English is a joy and a privilege, but classroom educators may not always know how their administration is approaching ELL students and vice versa. Reviewing a Few key practices as a staff can help move the entire school toward a comprehensive and culturally responsive approach to serving English language learners and their families. This guide can help get the process started. The recommendations in this guide were largely adapted from Critical Practices for Anti-Bias Education, a professional development publication from Teaching Tolerance. The guide also leans heavily on tasks and strategies found on tolerance.org and on material developed by our legal colleagues at the Southern Poverty Law Center. In addition to best practices that can be applied throughout the school building, the guide includes at least one teacher leadership spotlight in every section. These spotlights draw attention to ways in which teachers can take action outside the classroom to ensure that ELL students and their families enjoy welcoming, equitable experiences at school. We've given you a brief and possibly a more overwhelming overview of what just a few of our resources that Teaching Tolerance has to offer. Here's a sampling of some topics that we would encourage you to dig deeper into that we've discussed. As you find items that you might want to use, please share with participants that you are finding, um, what you are finding so that um, you could try for yourself and others could learn from you. The ILC is providing us with a Padlet that I'll click on in a moment. Um, hopefully it'll go in the chat shortly where you can place your ideas for others. Come back to this from time to time after our webinar has been concluded to see what others are finding as we are sure there will be ideas that you will also value. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that quickly just so you can see what it'll look like. I've put, we have put a few of them in already. This is a public Padlet, so you are free to just click on this and then go ahead and add your own ideas. I have put in the ideas that we've talked about in here already. So if um, I'm assuming in the chat, we've probably seen, well, I would like that reading diversity, you know, uh, document. Well, here it is right here. You just have to click on that. So um, make sure you are saving that link and coming back to it best practices, you know, it's over here. Um, so 
So thank you so much for your time. And please don't hesitate to read out, reach out to us if you have any questions about a specific need or topic or where to locate something on the Teaching Tolerance website. Thank you.